Hey, welcome to the 10 plus minute daily reality check. <laughs> Brett, Tara, we tend to have the little bit of longness, may we say, but nobody seems to be complaining about it. We go long. You know, we're like the quarterback that's like, we want third and 38 because we're going to fucking get a first down every single time because we like to go long. So why are stories bullshit in life? You know, it's funny. Everybody's got a story about who they're supposed to be. They got a story about how they're supposed to be some type of business person. They got a story about the type of relationship they're supposed to have. They have a story about, and this kind of sent little prickly things up and down your spine about a minute ago when we were talking about it, the story of passion, that fighting actually brings passion into a relationship. Oh, without the fighting and the arguing, how can we possibly have great sex? The story about the white picket fence, unfortunately, that white picket fence tends to be a little rusty because people's stories are based on their moms and their dads and everything else. So how do people lose the stories and find love based on who they truly are? Because it's their sole purpose. Because we're all looking for that twin flame, that soulmate, that beautiful connection with another human being, feeling like somebody that you've known forever and ever, somebody you shared past live adventures with or whatever it might be, depending on what level of woo-woo-ness that you believe in, right? (laughs) I'm the conductor of the woo-woo train, but I leave from Grand Central. (laughs) The problem is the conductor of the woo-woo train in Venice stays in Venice all day long and never gets out of fucking Venice. That's not a train. That is called being stuck in your weird fucking woo-woo thoughts. So, for us, it was a lot about just peeling back the layers, and it takes a lot of work. I mean, you know, we wake up at 4 a.m. a lot of times and do what we call sadhana, which is the morning meditation over at the ashram. Oh, 4 a.m.? 4 a.m.? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's cuddle and snuggle time, even if I'm alone. (laughs) That's what my pillows and I are like four hours into this amazing venture called sleep. So, okay, go ahead. Tell me about the scary 4 a.m. ritual. So, so it's called sadhana. Every Kundalini studio all over the country has it. Um, No charge. You can come in. Everybody's welcome. Is this every day? Every single day. Every day. Yeah. You both wake up at 4 a.m. every day? We, I would say most days. Most days. We don't go to the ashram every wow. day, but most days we're always up meditating at that time. We like to go to the ashram because it's nice to be physically around people, but if we are doing at home alone, we like to envision people around us. So collectively, we're tapping into the collective consciousness. Well, I envision people around me all the time. It's great. Yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> what I'm doing, yeah. It's like, woo, look, you know, there are so many people watching us right now. You have absolutely no, no idea. idea. Hey, look, there's Tom Brady. Hey, Tom, yeah. how are you? you know, I've always wanted to meet you and hang out, you know? But every day, do you go back to sleep? A lot of times, yeah. yeah. Although, okay, go, so, so if you're in a relationship with somebody and they look and say, you know, you are in a relationship yes. and you're married, but yes. you get involved in a relationship and the person looks and goes, Hey, um, can I just stay here and keep the bed warm? So that's perfectly okay. Or do you expect them and their soul journey to come and wake up at four o'clock? Oh my God. I get get back by six. So it's like normal waking up time anyway. Maybe that's not normal for most people, but for me it is. For me it is. (laughs) So this is, you have a a one year old. It's like, you're not, you're constantly up. Exactly. Are they still in the co-sleeping? Uh, she's in the other, in her crib now. Okay, good. Yeah. Because it was a little dangerous, and I bet she fell out <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you're not full woo woo, like the full woo woo. We were doing co sleeping until until that. So, but we still have our cuddle time, and yeah. you know, cuddle time's important. Yeah, but it's I, very important. I find this family bed thing that's very big in Venice and everything else kind of scary because to me. We're talking about a soul journey and why stories are bullshit, right? Yes. Souls need to sleep next to each other every single night because I truly believe that men and women, whether you're having sex or not, you're communicating to each other as you're cuddling and snuggling and touching and bouncing off of one another and feet are touching and everything else and you reconnect when you have a third party in there. It just doesn't really work that well. I could see that. Yeah. 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 No, I think it's nice to have that connection with my husband and I. And yeah, it's important. Yeah, it's important. Well, yeah, when you are with a partner, you're sharing that energy. So you're always going to be connected. So especially when you're having sex with people, it's like sex is actually should be looked at as a, a different experience that when you're sleeping with somebody that you're taking in their energy and you're giving away yours. So we never want to sleep with anyone that we don't really want to be. Or so, we don't want their energy. Or we don't want their energy. It's like it's, it's gonna stay with you. Yeah. So you know, if you don't want to be them, or you're not inspired by them, like don't sleep with them because you're gonna take in some of their energy. 
Oh, you're constantly. And you're giving them, yeah. the, you're giving them yours. Yeah, you're giving away a lot, a lot. Yeah, I always tell people all the time: don't sleep with somebody unless you're fully inspired in so many ways. Yeah. You need to have a mental gasm, not just a physical orgasm. Your brain needs to explode with possibilities about being with them. Your mind needs to explode with possibilities. You need to also know that the person that you're going to be with needs to stimulate you to be better than you already are. That's why your stories are complete bullshit. Because if you're, a lot of people do that, especially mm-hmm. in dating, they date a story, you know, they think right. they can transform somebody into the story or fit the mold that they're looking for based on the story that they had from the past. And to me, it's all about stimulate my mind, stimulate my body, stimulate my soul, right? And I will do the same thing back for you. It's a soul contract that I think people need right. to understand. You never know what someone's going to be. Like I don't have... And I think a lot of people have these dating stories, like somebody has to be, and your husband's older than you, So, but mm-hmm. you had the story probably that he needed to be within a certain age range, yes. right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you went and met him, and he was way out of the age range. I literally right? was like, oh, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it I remember laughing about it. Yeah, it, it works so beautifully. Yeah. And I think, you know, if you're able to break out of these molds or these kind of ideas that society or your parents or other people have put on you, then sometimes, you know, that is where the magic lies and when you're able to break free of these stories through you know the unlearning and the uh, getting rid of that past conditioning which is you know what we do when we wake up that early and what we do through our meditations then a lot of times you're able to have this you know extraordinary life or something that's different than the mediocre or the normal and so that's what we look for when we work with you know, high vibe living, we work to get out of those molds and to break free from those stories and to forge our new, our own path and a new path. You know, it's interesting because I always tell people all the time, I love women, you know, Mm -hmm. and I like women that can match my energy, right? So I don't know what age that is because I never look at age of people. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is when I'm eating eight, nine years old, I'm going to be Clint Eastwood, you know? It's like <laughs> I'm going to walk around and I'm going to be fully functional. And the fact of the matter is, whoever my partner is, however young she is, wherever she might be, she's going to be there side by side with me because that's what people need to think about a feeling and emotion. Mm-hmm. And, and in order to create the person, you need to create the emotion first. How do you feel around this person? When you first meet this person, how do you feel around this person? How do you feel when you go out with them? Do they see you? Are they asking to see you? Are you are they giving themselves equally? You know, this is where the stories, the new stories are always coming because the new love story that we need to always talk about is what's being presented because we don't know. We should never have limiting beliefs. It's like you have no idea what age somebody's going to be. Well, and those limiting beliefs are what keep us stuck in a pattern. So a lot of times, you know, just myself as an example, I had a story that people, I would attract people and they would just leave me. And it was a story in my head that I kept saying over and over and over again. And I didn't even realize it was so subconsciously programmed that I had to do a lot of meditation, a lot of talking through stuff with people to really understand that that was a program story. And then I had to go in and deeply unlearn that story. And because if, if it was happening, it was actually manifesting into my life as, as at a big level, actually. Lots of people were coming in and out because I was saying, they're just going to leave. And they just left. And they did. They left. Oh, yeah. It was like, well, this isn't what I want. And so my conscious mind, I'm like, I'm not saying this consciously, but subconsciously, I totally am. And so that's why we wake up at 4 a.m. And that's why, you know, we don't, you don't have to wake up at 4 a.m. No. It's yeah. a great time to you because your, sub, your, your conscious mind is still lulled into sleep. So it's, it's not loud. And so you can go in and do a lot of work in meditation through Kundalini Yoga, which is the yoga of awareness. And it penetrates with all the movement and breath your subconscious mind and clears it out so at 4 a.m you're pretty quiet consciously your conscious ego mind's not not awake annoying you and so you can get in there and do a ton of work yeah but so you can get it done more effectively, effectively and faster because you're also working with the energy of the day which it's called the ambrosial hour mm-hmm. so it's the creation energy of the day so along mm-hmm. with like your conscious mind being more subdued you have this like powerful creation energy that you're able to work with so it's just so much more effective 
Yeah. But, you know, yeah, I mean, obviously meditation and the breath work and everything that we teach and do is effective anytime. And, you know, just doing it is what we really encourage and to stay consistent with it and do it every day. Um, and you'll find, you'll find it. I mean, it's just doing it early in the morning, right? When you wake up is more effective because it just helps you do it faster. Yeah. Is all it's help. You're helping yourself do it faster. But if you're gonna do it, just do it. Like get it, get it. Like sit down, meditate, and and you need to do some movement before you meditate. That's what yoga is all about. Is meditation really, and emotion. It's it's yes. you yeah. move through things to like quiet down your mind so you're able to go in and meditate and really clear out some stuff. So a lot of times, like if you're not doing, you know, a Shavasana for more than, you know, if it's not more than five minutes, it's sometimes really hard for people to slip in and really do the work. So it's like you want to pair a really longer period of, of quiet meditation after your movement to really do that work. So I have a question. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I love this. Stories are bullshit. So you yeah. kept, people kept leaving. They kept right? leaving. Yeah, they kept leaving. So what is so now that you've done all this work, uh-huh. I'm going to put you on the spot because you got married, you have a beautiful kid, and, and you know the one, one-year-old birthday party. I watched those little <laughs> things on, on Instagram. I said, "This is so cute." Like, this one. And who the? How much did they spend at that birthday party? Oh my god! I'm looking at that birthday party. Oh, that was like, the, yeah, my friend's like, birthday party the next day. Yeah. Oh my! Like, whoa! This is like this is like I want to go to this party. I don't even have a one-year-old. It was this, amazing. This yeah. was fun, and, and, and everybody's like partying, and there's like all these like like seem like expensive shit going down. I'm, I'm thinking I was one. I got a slap on the butt and go have your cake. You know, I mean, my parents might have spent five dollars. So what is your new? Okay, so your old story was bullshit, right? So here you are, you've done all this work. And I think a lot of women listening right now, you know, you're a beautiful woman, okay? You've got your shit together. You're a Libra. So, God, you're even sexier because you're a Libra. <laughs> the, the scales are balanced. Right? Yes. Answers, right? Yes. We need that Libra. Oh, my God, please balance me out, you know, yes. right? So yes. what's your new story? What is the new story in your new intent? And how are you manifesting that love into your life? Well, it's really, um, it came down as this, so this is a thing I'm still working through. And actually this last Venus retrograde brought in an entirely new thing for me. It was, I, I wasn't working well with my feminine energy. I wasn't fully balanced and I had to bring in that feminine energy to balance me out. I was really operating out of a masculine energy, which wants to chase and it wants to, you know, be control. masculine yeah, yeah. and control, control the situation. Yeah. And I didn't feel worthy. That's where it really came down to. I didn't feel worthy of having somebody pursue me and stay and want to stay. I didn't think that that was my place. And so Uh my new story is really, I deserve this. I deserve for it to be, I deserve to be chased and I'm not, I'm going to be chased. Like the word chase because chase doesn't work because you are a high vibrational, beautiful woman and a man who's your equal. Like, Men like me, we don't chase. So okay. what do you do? T- let's Honestly, me we, yeah. rom- we romance. Okay. Romance. We romance. We romance. Yeah, we, look at you. We, we look at you and we say, beautiful woman, I want to get to know you. I want to hear you. And I want to hear what you're all about. So I'm going to, you know. Um, Thank we're you, gonna, we're gonna, you're welcome. I love yeah, that. We're, we're, gonna, yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna talk. We're gonna get to know each other. We're gonna text. You're gonna respond. You're not gonna prove to be busy being busy. We're gonna hang out. We're gonna do things. We're gonna walk the beach. We're gonna go play miniature golf. We're gonna bowl. We're gonna do whatever the fuck we like yeah. to do. And we're gonna learn one another. It's gonna be a very receptive. Literally thing. lights up my entire being because that's you know I, I am very independent and I, I agree with that side of of our society and our reality. Like I want to be independent, but I do want somebody to come in and romance me because I deserve it. You and, deserve that. And really, Ask you know, for it. it's Absolutely. good for me and it's also good. It will be good for my partner. It's a healthy relationship. It's healthy energy. It's the dance that you need yeah. to do. And it's the, the dance that you need for manifestation. Right. Exactly. And, the cha- and the chasing little boys yes. chase, right? Yes. Like you, take, you take a ball, you go yeah. to a two year old birthday party, and I remember I did a speech one time on, on in front of like 700 people and I took a grapefruit and I made them chase it down the, down, down the, <laughs> down the stage, right? And they looked at me and they go, this is what you do with women. A man doesn't chase, right. a man attracts. Now a woman who's in her true sensuality and mm-hmm. sexuality, and that's really the stage of your life that you're in right now. Your sexual power is really like here yeah. mm-hmm. and it's going to keep going upwards, right? Yeah. So the fact is use your sexual power to seduce the romantic man, because you want the man that's romantic. Right. 
So the only way the romantic man's coming to you is if he sees your sexual energies and it sucks him in and he can't resist it. You want to become more beautiful as each minute passes. And that's really funny. When I, t- when I speak to a woman and I get to know her, mm-hmm. as each layer unpeels and I unpeel each layer, she's either doing one or two things. She's either becoming so goddamn beautiful, I don't know how I lived without her, mm-hmm. and I see the little girl and I see the seductress and I see everything, or I see the devil. I see the horns come out because she's not the person that I want to be. She's showing me who she really is, and she's not equal and worthy of me. So be unlock that female seductress. That's who you have. Okay, I like that. I love that we changed the word of your manifestation to romance. This is really helpful. Yeah, I I love that. Yeah, Yeah. because we work with manifesting a lot, and we we love to really dive into it and teach it and work with it. So words are such a huge part of it because that's what your thoughts are, and that's what you end up creating as your reality, so changing the word chase, mm-hmm. which would attract a boy, a boy. energy, to romance, yeah. great, which like, would like attract that equal, and that energy is really powerful and can change everything. So. Yeah, but you can see the, the story, it becomes, the first thing it, it, is to really become aware of all the fucking stories we tell ourselves. Exactly. And some of the they're stories, all bullshit. They're yeah. all bullshit. Yeah. They're all bullshit. They're all imprinted from your childhood or even your past lives. Yeah. And it's becoming aware. So it's it's peeling back those layers and it can be through journaling. It can be through meditation. It can be through breath work. It can be through yoga. It can be through anything any which way it's we just have, becoming aware yeah we have like six pillars that we talk yeah. about are ways that you can kind of get into this space and they're all right. things that you can incorporate in your life but we in- encourage people to just choose one like what resonates with you the most mm-hmm. as a gateway especially for people who are new to this stuff and kind of like work with that one thing is it meditation is it breath work like and mine was connection it. mine was about astrology and connecting that way and Brits was about yoga and Connecting meditation and connecting that way. And and she was also about manifestation. She yes. really liked that topic. So I like we cover the all of it. There's, you know, yeah. there's not one way to get into this world and really to unlock your subconscious. There's multiple ways of doing it and multiple ways, you know, to, again, get in that snowball effect. So it's just... It's really cool. I mean, spirituality is one of my favorite. Oh, I could go. We could go years on this. Oh my gosh! Human design chart. I'm a manifester, so (laughs) I'm totally into manifestation. I mean, whatever I decide. I mean, literally, I can wake up in the morning and go, "Yeah, today's a great day to fall in love." And right. you know what? The entire day, I'm falling in love with people all day long. Yeah. Did I say it's the day that I'm going to meet my person? No, because you never know when that true gift is, and that's where the romance comes in. If you have a romance plan, then every single day that romantic, serendipitous moment can happen. You don't know where it's going to be. You can both reach for a muffin at Air One. You know, you yeah. can both. You can be. You know, you can literally be in an elevator, yeah. lost, and you went into the wrong building. I call it the sliding door moment. It's the possibility of the sliding door. And when you're spiritually awake and you don't have the stories anymore of the past, and you're fully present, you then see the gifts that are being presented to you. All right, we went way over time. We've been talking and talking and talking. We're going to have you guys back in the future because okay. I got to tell you something. This has just been way too much fun, right? You've been my favorite guest so far. Oh, yes, I love you, David. Because, you know, because, <laughs> thank you. Because it, even though my best friend does a lot of the co-hosting with me, okay. it's like, but as it come down to guest, I mean, we have so much that we can talk about yeah. and the moments go really, really fast. And I know people listening are going, but there's more, there's more, there's always more. And that's why tomorrow you can tune in. But right now, <laughs> this is an opportunity for you to plug that beautiful plan and where they can reach you and everything else. So you can find us at highvibeliving.com. We have a Rise Up, which is our six-week course in high vibrational living. And we have tons of complimentary like meditations. And we do content on Instagram at High Vibe Living. And we're all about yeah. inspiration and lifting people up. And ultimately, our mission is to elevate humans. Uh, they need elevation. Yeah. Some of them need a little bit more. So we're just going to be elevated oh. toward... Oh, bad joke, bad joke, bad joke. Bad joke. <laughs> Can't end it on a bad joke. 10 minute daily reality check, sometimes 12, sometimes 19 minutes. Oh, what we're going. Oh, shit. Oh, but that's okay. I broke the rules. But then again, fuck it. I never followed the goddamn rules in life hey, anyway. That's why the stories are bullshit. Oh, yeah, right. exactly. Write your own rules every single day. And that way you can have whatever you want because the universe only listens to people who write their own rules. We'll see you tomorrow. Self help that doesn't suck. Bye.